Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about how to connect up your Grove board or compatible Arduino board. So this is the Arduino core right here and some peripheral devices on the edge of the uh, of the Grove board. We're going to talk about how to connect up a soil moisture sensor like this and a MOSFET switch like this that are connected to a power supply or battery pack and a pump, a water pump like this. Okay, so we're going to be showing you how to do that. All right, so first thing we got to do is we got to talk about how things are connected up. So if you look at the screen right here, what we've got is the water pump, which I just showed you, it's this right here. Okay, and this is a, it's got a motor inside of it. And, and basically you immerse this inside of a bucket of water and then it will take water in through the inlet right here and shoot it out the tube uh, into your plant. Okay, because we're, we're trying to water plants autom uh, autom in a sort of automated way. Okay, it has two wires inside of this cable right here, and those two wires are shown right here in the image, the, the going from the MOSFET switch right here into the pump. And, and those two wires are connected to the motor inside of the pump. Now, you have to connect it into the MOSFET switch, which has disappeared on me. There it is, right here. Okay, the MOSFET switch has two um, terminals on it. And the term terminals uh, require a screwdriver, a jeweler screwdriver or, or fine screwdriver with a flat head on it like that. Okay, and you, you turn it in order to get the wires to stick inside of the holes that are right there. All right, and so on one side you have the power supply on this side right here that connects up. And uh, let's see, from this perspective, the bottom terminal right here is plus, the top terminal right here is negative. So if, you, if you're using a battery pack, like is in the illustration right there, black is negative, um, and that goes on top there. And the plus right here indicates that on the bottom right here, that's where your plus five goes. In my case, I'm using a 12 volt supply, and you'll see that in a moment, but uh, 12, five, nine, they should all work. And if you're using four AA batteries, it'll give you about five to six volts. Now on the other side of it, there's this wire right here, this cable right here with two wires, and you have to connect them up here. Now, depending on which pump you got, you might have to cut um, the connector off. It might be a barrel jack or a USB connector. I don't know. Um, and so you can talk to me during class or during the, uh, during the lab sessions with the technicians about how to cut and, uh, and expose the bare wires. So those uh, pump wires are there power supply wires on this side, and then you've got your Grove connector that comes out from the MOSFET switch. Now, some of you may have a MOSFET switch like this. It might be a solid state relay. It might be a, um, a, a normal relay as well. There's a bunch of different solutions for doing this. In the kit, you've got the MOSFET switch. All right, uh, and that is all connected up to, uh, let me see which one do we connect it to here. Um, we've connected it to D2. So you can see D2 is labeled right on there. Okay, and you can see it on the screen as well. There's a D and a two beside it. Then we've got your potentiometer, or not potentiometer, but your capacitive moisture sensor right here, which sends a voltage signal that's proportional to the uh, state of, of dryness, basically, of your soil. And it's got a Grove connector on it, and it's connected to the A0 port right there. Now, there's a trick with this. And if you took 1011 with me, you know the trick already. And that is either you have to swap out the two signal lines that are in here, okay? And that would be the yellow and the white lines, or you pop out, there's a potentiometer that goes in here. The potentiometer looks like this, okay? And uh, there's little perforation lines on, on the edge of the board that allow you to knock it out. Uh, let me see, it was supposed to not, how did this go? Would have been like this originally. And those perforation lines allow you to cut it out using like a screwdriver. Okay, you can you can take a screwdriver to it like that and pop them out along the perforations. And, um, and if you do that, then you can connect up your potentiometer like this without having to swap out the wires, the yellow and white wires in this cable. Either way you can go, uh, if you're confused about that, come and talk to me or talk to the technicians or actually some of the, the students in the, in the class know about this as well. Okay, so we've got this, which can be reused because we can hook it up with a Grove cable, 
put it aside. Got a potentiometer, or sorry, our soil moisture sensor right here, and our MOSFET. And inside here, I've got my OLED going to show that, um, well, basically the state of my switch. And if I press it, you'll hear the motor inside of the pump turn. Let's get it closer right here. See, it's really loud. Um, and so if this was immersed in water, then water would shoot out. It's currently dry. I've got it out of water. If I press it, there's a, something that appears on the screen and the OLED, sorry, the MOSFET driver will drive the pump that's in here using the 12 volt, in my case, um, voltage that's coming from my power supply, like that. Now, we can use our multimeter, our handy dandy little multimeter right here. So here's the multimeter right here. Yours will be looking different than this, but I set it, the dial, okay, so that it reads 20 volts. Now in my case, um, I've got it set up to 20 volts DC, so it's a solid line and a dot, dot, dot line, okay? Uh, depending on your multimeter, it might look different, but it's, I'm setting it to 20 volts because your um, power supply is somewhere between five and 12 volts. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the leads on here and take the multimeter power supply connection and I'm going to touch it using these two leads, okay? It's through the, the, um, the screw terminals. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Now I gotta put it down. I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the, the perspective of the display. So you can see it reads about 14 volts or so. Um, so depending on your power supply, depending on how it's loaded, it can a 12 volt supply can come up to about 12, uh, 14 volts or so. Anyways, yours should read between six and nine or maybe 12 but you should see some voltage right there. And that's on the terminals for the power supply. Now, if I go to the other side and I do the same thing right here, I press my leads into the other pair of terminals like that. Press it down like that. Press the button. I'm just gonna show you in a sec. Just tricky doing this with uh, two hands, <laughs> not three. Um, there, there. All right. Oops. Hold on. Almost there. Okay. Like this. Hold on. Ah. Okay. You can see the voltage changes. Now, depending on if you put the black terminal on one and the red terminal on the other, the voltage that comes out will be positive or negative. It's just the inverse. But basically what you're trying to see is if when you turn on the button, the software drives the MOSFET and that there's a voltage that appears on the output terminals of the MOSFET that will then go into the, um, into the motor. Okay. So, so that's basically an overview of from a hardware perspective, what we've connected up. Now, from a software perspective, let's take a look at how we did it in the Arduino code. All right, so here's my code right here. I have two imports right here, Arduino and the uh, import for the uh, for the OLED display. Then I have synonyms that have been defined for the MOSFET, the red LED, and the button. I didn't really show the red LED, but whatever. Um, MOSFET is on digital input output two, the red LED is on four, and the button is on six, okay? And I, I put these names in here because they'll actually be easier to use later on in the, in the code. I set this up for a variable for my display. Then I set the mode for my three pins. So the MOSFET's an output, the LED is gonna be an output, and the button will be an input. I then, for safety, turn off the MOSFET. So the MOSFET's that switch that drives the, the pump. I turn it to low, which turns the pump off during setup. That's important. Then I set up the display, the OLED display right there. And that's the subject of a, a previous video. At the beginning of my loop, I set the position of the co cursor and then I have an if statement. And the if statement says, if the button reads high, then turn on the pump, clear the display and on the pump, uh, sorry, on the OLED's screen, write the word water with an exclamation mark. And I've got a bunch of spaces in here to help with the formatting and the switching from one version of what's on the display to the other. 
Then there's the else. And that else basically says, if the button wasn't pressed, then turn the MOSFET low, turn it off. And it, it will subsequently turn off the pump as well. And on the OLED display, no water. So basically what we've got here is a setup routine. Then we've got a loop function right here that repeats over and over and over again. And every time it repeats, then we take a look at the state of the button. We see if it's high. And if it is, then turn on the pump. And by high, it means turned on, okay? Then turn on the pump. And then if it is not pressed down, so that the button has not been activated, then instead turn the MOSFET off. And there you have it, an overview of how to turn on and off the MOSFET. In the next video, in another video, we're gonna talk about the soil moisture sensor.